Hi friends, this is IELTS listening part four. I'm reading the text. This is a long lecture type thing and you will realize what is going on. And while listening to you will answer uh, the tips and the audio script will not be shown to you. And uh, you will just uh, have the question, question paper, answer sheet and the audio will be read out to you or played for you. So this is part four. Questions are 31 to 40. I'm reading it for you so that uh, each and every word um, uh, you can understand. Um, I will do my best to read it as it is written there. Okay? Um, because when the audio is, uh, is played in a natural way, uh, the words will be twisted and uh, some emotions when are added to that, that when we see a person that uh, is playing, uh, expressing his emotions, so he's talking to us, it's not the audio that we see. We see um, the eyes, the body gestures, the hands playing and everything. And uh, the up, up and down of the voice, we can see, we can we see, understand from this um, audio, but uh, still, the visual effect is not is here along with it. So um, to some extent, I think uh, the, the while listening, we pay some attention. Uh, it's, I shall advise, this is my suggestion that instead of showing only audio, uh, there should, they should be videos so that uh, people can see and write, okay? But I'm, I'm sure they will not listen to me because that's British Council and they don't, you see accept this idea. And if they do this, that would be a wonderful thing. Okay, uh, let's read this, part four. Nowadays, uh, we use uh, different products for personal cleanliness, laundry, dishwashing, and household cleaning. Um, household cleaning. Um, but uh, this is very much uh, 20th century development. The origins of cleanliness date back uh, to prehistoric times uh, since about three is essential for life. The earliest people lived near water and knew something about its cleansing properties, at least that it uh, rinsed the mud off their hands. Uh, during the excavation of ancient Babylon, evidence was found that uh, soap making was known as early as 2800 BC. Archaeologists discovered cylinders made by clay with inscriptions up on them saying that pads were boiled with ashes. This is a method of making soap though uh, there is no reference to the uh, purpose of this material. The early Greeks bathed, <laughs> the early Greeks. The early Greeks based for aesthetic reasons, and uh, apparently it didn't use soap. Instead, uh, they cleaned their bodies with blocks of sand, humus, and ashes, then anointed themselves with oil and uh, scraped off the oil and dirt with a metal instrument uh, known as a uh, Trigil, trigil. They also used oil mixed with ashes. Clothes were washed without soap in a stream. Ancient Germans and Gauls are also credited with discovering how to make a substance called soap made of metals, animal melted animal fat and ashes. They used this mixture 
to tint their hair red. Soap got its name according to the ancient Roman legend uh, from Mount Sapo, where animals were sacrificed, uh, leaving deposits of animal fat. Uh, rain washed these deposits along the good ashes uh, down into the clay soil along the river Tiber. Uh, women uh, found that this mixture greatly reduced the effort required and to wash the clothes. Uh, as Roman civilization advanced, so did bathing. The first of the famous Roman baths supplied with water uh, from the aqueducts was built around 312 BC. The Baths were luxurious and the bathing became very popular. And by the second century AD, the Greek physician Galen recommended soap for both um, medicinal and the cleansing purposes. So this is the first half, you can see the line. And the first half, maybe questions are up to 31 to 35, as you can see this. Then I will go to question 30, 36 to 40 in the second half of the text. Uh, after the fall of Roman in 467 AD and the resulting decline in the bathing habits, much of Europe felt the impact of filth on the public health. This lack of personal cleanliness and cleanliness and related universality and living conditions were major factors in the outbreaks of disease in the Middle Ages and especially the Black Death of the 14th century. Nevertheless, soap making became an established craft in Europe and associations of soap makers guarded their trade secrets closely vegetable and animal oils were used with ashes of plants, along with the perfume, apparently for the first time. Gradually, more varieties of soap became available on having, uh, on uh, for shaving and um, shampooing, as well as bathing and laundry. A major step towards large-scale commercial soaping, a soap making occurred in 1791 when a French chemist, Nicolas Leblanc, Leblanc um, patented a process for uh, turning the salt into soda ash or sodium carbonate. Uh, soda ash is the alkali obtained from ashes so that combines with the fat to form soap. The lab length, the lab length process yielded quantities of a good quality, inexpensive soda ash. Uh, modern soap making was born some 20 years later in the early 19th century with the discovery of Michael Eugenie uh, Chevriol, um, Cavriol or Chevriol, another French chemist of the chemical nature and the relationship of fats, glycerin and the fatty acids. His studies established the basis for both fat and soap chemistry and the soap making became a science. Further developments during the 19th century made it easier and cheaper to manufacture soap. Until the 19th century, soap was regarded as a luxury item and was heavily taxed in several countries. As it became more readily available, it became an everyday necessity, a development that was reinforced 
when the high tax was removed. Soap was then something ordinary people could afford and the cleanliness standards improved. With this widespread use came the development of milder soap sofa um, bathing and soap sofa use in the washing machines uh, that were available to consumers by the turn of the 20th century. So this is the end of the last question for the you know how we finish and now we go to the paper and uh, Part three, well, we're done, and now we go to part four. Yes, um, part four questions 31 to 40, and then beginning complete the uh, notes below. Write one word only for each answer, okay? So, already I have um, the um, subtract out these numbers, it helps me to concentrate on the um, on the task that I have to do, fill in the blanks or something like that. Okay, um, the early history of keeping clean. A prehistoric times, what was used to wash off mud. Ancient Babylon, soap like material found in clay cylinders. Ancient Greece, uh, people cleaned themselves with sand and other substances. Uh, used a strategic scraper made of metal and um, wash, washed clothes in streams. Ancient Germany of and Gaul used soap and to color their hair. Ancient Rome, animal fat, ashes, and the clay mixed through action of rain used for washing clothes. From about 312 BC, you can easily trace that back, water carried into Roman baths by aqueducts uh, Europe in the Middle Ages. A decline in uh, bathing contributing to occurrence of diseases. Disease. Um, dash. Uh, began to be added to soap perfumes, okay? And uh, Europe uh, from a uh, 17th century, 1600s, uh, clean, 1600s. Um, cleanliness and the bathing started becoming usual. 1791, Lavlac invented a way of making soda ash from salt. Early 1800s, uh, Chevrolet turned soap making into a science. From 1800s, uh, there was no longer tax on soap. So you see, these headings are very helpful. They bear to trace the answer. Uh, you can easily go back there. Okay. For example, the prehistoric, it is also mentioned, Babylon, uh, you can also see this, and the Greece. So they are in order. You can easily find the answers too. So this is all uh, about, um, see, um, uh, very cleverly, they have uh, split the text into two halves, but here um, there is no division in the questions, uh, one only that you have to uh, listen to the audio. Ah, it, it, uh, this is that you will only listen to, you will not be able to go back, I, I uh, see. Uh, I was tricked to that, that these headings might be helpful in tracing the answer in the reading section. But uh, this is not reading, this is listening, but you will not see these, these uh, uh, only while uh, listening to the text, so you have to fill in all that, okay? So you need to be very, very active. It's not easy one. I was surprised that how is that, that this helpful thing is given in that. Anyway, uh, sorry, I drifted to from listening to reading. And this is, you see, listening section. And in the listening section, you will listen the audio and you will have to do it the same. 
Okay, uh, I hope uh, you've got the idea of what to do in the actual examination and uh, uh, maybe it will help you in, may I have read the, the uh, audio tape because I have seen that most of the students, they don't bother uh, to read the uh, listening text. Uh, the, uh, that was, you see, to give them idea the one type of um, audio they were going to listen. So when they just jumped without putting their step on, on to, without being on the first step, they jumped to the fifth, sixth, ninth, tenth, and they want to be very successful and um, without making much of it. But this is a test. It needs a person training properly, and you need a coaching as well. So thank you for watching. In the end, the formal request, if you have uh, if you have not yet, please subscribe to my channel and press the bell button to get the first one. Thank you for watching. Have a nice time. Goodbye.